participation contact. Don't be left out. Come, let us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Coronavirus pandemic has devastating effects on local and international businesses to the extent that millions of people are losing their jobs and other means of livelihood. These effects are indeed difficult to quantify as most families now find it extremely hard to feed and maintain their homes. The situation is expected to continue as long as the lockdown persists, movement of people restricted and businesses shut down. Though stimulus packages in form of food items and cash have been initiated by different levels of governments and organizations to cushion the effects of the lockdown, many are still asking for more. Airlines have suspended their flights, shipping companies left their vessels on the high sea, and local farmers cannot evacuate their farm produce due to a difficulty in accessing transport. As we already know, the price of crude oil has no dived to near zero dollar at the international market, making the economy of many countries to prepare for a recession. As we speak, there is, there is no vaccine as the superpowers are struggling to find solution. There are also conspiracy theories about the pandemic. These are more we'll be looked into on Searchlight tonight. Good evening and welcome. I am Jude Abugu. First is our news segment. Experts are of the view that the economic consequences of COVID-19 pandemic will offer Nigerian policemakers the opportunity to diversify from oil sector to other viable sectors yet untapped. In this report, Kelechi Ochara takes a look at the economic effects of the lockdown. A significant rise in the number of COVID-19 cases all over the world has degenerated to a sudden fall in global economy. This worldwide health hazard that resulted to lockdown in economic activities is also transcending to uncertainties in various sectors of Nigeria economy, including the oil sector, which is the main source of high revenue. Economic experts are of the view that economic diversification drive by the Nigerian government remains a sure way to saddle through the current economic instabilities. On how best to flatten the curve of the dreaded COVID-19, concerned citizens suggested total compliance to the directives by the World Health Organization. Infection has cut across everybody, even people in the villages. So people should adhere strictly uh, to all the directives uh, especially the basic ones of, uh, you know, uh, uh, sanitary condos. Meanwhile, some Nigerians have lamented on the effects of the lockdown on low-income earners. Government should help us. They should come to our rescue. We are dying of hunger and we have no help. And many of us are widows and some are orphans who have no father or mother. So we need the help of the governor. And about the coronavirus, we heard about it, and we, they told us what and what we should be doing. In the spirit of economic recovery and growth instability, a public analyst recounted that the Nigerian federal budget for the 2020 fiscal year was prepared with significant revenue expectations, but the emergence of COVID-19 and its increasing rate has called for drastic review and changes in fiscal projections. With the lockdown, importation is reduced. With lockdown, businesses are no longer moving. With lockdown, banks are rendering very skeletal you know, services because uh, the economy must be activated on daily basis. People will go and buy products. People will sell. Money will circulate. Uh, travel. Nobody is traveling again. You know how much you make airlines. 
according to some well-meaning Nigerians, the lockdown in most states of the Federation and slowdown in the country's economy call for a rethink for both the government and the people. In Enugu, Kelechi Ochiara, NTA News. Thank you, Kelechi, for that background report. Such lights continues after this break. Stay with us virus disease spreads mainly from person to person through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. We can protect ourselves through the following ways. Avoid close contact with infected persons. Wash your hands often with soap and running water for at least 20 seconds, especially after you have been in a public place or after blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing. In the absence of soap and water, use the hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Stay home if you are sick, except to get medical care. Cover your mouth and nose with tissue paper when you cough or sneeze, or use the inside of your elbow. In case of any suspected case, call this emergency number 0818 255 5 Five five zero. You can as well call one one two or one one seven. This, this message, message is, is from Enugu State Minister of Information. Information. The state government plans to drive increase in Nigeria, assess low interest rates from internal sources in a bid to complete all ongoing projects, as well as initiate implementation of legacy projects that will be completed before we leave office in 2023. Glad to know you're still there. To discuss the economic effects of uh, the lockdown occasioned by the coronavirus pandemic, we have in our studio tonight Professor Jehu Onyekwere Naji, a distinguished professor of international law and global politics, and a former professor and visiting scholar to University of Kansas Law School. You're welcome to such light. Thank you so much. Good evening. Also joining us on Searchlight tonight is the Enugu State Commissioner for Information, Nail Gucci de Aro. You are welcome to Searchlight. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it's a pleasure having the Honorable Commissioner on Searchlight tonight. And I will welcome him with the first question. Uh, Honorable Commissioner, recently the two uh, COVID-19 patients were had in Enugu State recovered and they were discharged. And uh, since that first case, Enugu State has not recorded any COVID-19 positive uh, cases. What do you think uh, has uh, helped the state to record this kind of uh, success? Because in other states, the numbers keep increasing. Well, first and foremost, I must say that uh, Enugu is grateful to God. We thank the Almighty God because all you have done can only be successful, can only be reasonable if it pleases God. And more to that, His Excellency, the Governor of the state, has also provided wonderful and unique leadership in a crisis period like this. We had, like you said, our index cases, the people who returned from outside the country to the glory of God. They were well managed, they were stabilized, they had recovered, they've tested negative on two occasions and they have left, fully been discharged. But these are resultant. The successes are resultant effects of policy situations that the government, under the leadership of Right Honorable Dr. Ifan has put in place. You will recall that immediately the world started facing this massive challenge of uh, this global pandemic. His Excellency, immediately presiding over the State Executive Council, made an immediate release of 330 million naira to the multi-sectoral committee to increase the level of the state's preparedness for you know, response to COVID-19. It is important to tell you that part of these resources that were released includes money that was released to procure additional ambulances and incident vehicle. It, it also includes money that was used for immediate relocation of the state isolation center from Colary to uh, Parkland. All right, uh, Honorable so Commissioner, other, we uh, quite understand uh, that the state government has done a lot uh, trying to contain the spread of this virus. But uh, looking at the number of cases we had in Enugu State, after the two cases, we never recorded any other case in Enugu State. We want to know what may have prevented the spread 
or maybe community transmission or people even bringing this yes, uh, that's, into that's the that's exactly what I was, I was going to and you stopped me. I'm mm. talking about those measures. Okay. The measures the government has put in place. Those measures, like I said, from the release of the funds, went ahead to his address to the state where he put in place certain effective measures. Okay. One was the shutting down of all education institutions, primary, secondary, tertiary. Two was asking all the civil servants, public and civil servants, to work from home. Three was banning all social ceremonies, marriage ceremonies, burial ceremonies, masquerade festivals, operation of clubs and bars. He went ahead to also make regulations for commuter trans uh, transportation in Enugu. This included what made sure that Keke could not take more than two, buses could not take more than two on a seat, city cars could not take more than three, and of course, in all these measures, His Excellency emphasized the fact that the protocol of the WHO and the National Center for Disease Control must be obeyed. These are protocols of physical distancing, regular hand washing, and of course, these are sanitizers in public places. Remember, he did not stop at that. He moved on to also improve on the measures as the numbers were growing globally. And that is where he put the measures that came effect 6 p.m. on 31st of March. That was the measure to close all interstate borders, shut down all markets of any kind, and only allow the places that deal with food, medicine, and essential uh, uh, materials of life. All right. So these whole measures put together ensured that Enugu State remained as safe as it is today. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Commissioner. Let us hear from uh, Professor Onyekwere. From your own assessment, he has uh, enumerated uh, some of the measures the state government put in place to make sure that the transmission of uh, COVID-19 is contained in the state. Can you say that these measures have been very effective, especially uh, in the areas of uh, social control measure and uh, some other aspects? Yeah, in order to uh, understand very well the, the trajectory of this uh, COVID-19, we need to put into perspective the way the virus has uh, transmitted from uh, Wuhan, China, to Italy, to United States, and then to Nigeria. Uh, we have been reliably informed by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control that the same strain of virus which originated in China is the same strain that is in Nigeria. Now, if that is the case, we have to juxtapose the different uh, manifestations of symptoms you know, uh, talking about lockdown, this is uh, one of the measures that the government has put in place, especially from the federal government, by locking down uh, Lagos, Ogun, and the FCT. The reason for this is quite uh, obvious, because Lagos is an international uh, boundary that allows uh, people from uh, different parts of the world to enter our country. It's uh, understandable. Then uh, Ogun State eventually inherited the, 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 the same problem because it is a contaminous state with uh, Lagos. So there's no uh, hard and fast uh, we are dividing Lagos and Ogun because we, once you are in Ogun State, you may not know when you are in Lagos because they share very close uh, proximity. Now, uh, in Enugu State, as the Honorable Commissioner has said, I am very glad to know that the uh, governor has put in place these uh, palliatives. But the problem is that beyond what the governments have put in place, how does it trickle down to the ordinary man on the streets or at home? Uh, I took some samples of opinions, you know, the other day in Enugu. I discovered that a lot of people are just suffering. People are suffering. People cannot make ends meet. They cannot make their daily needs. They cannot meet up. You see, the government is already overwhelmed. Granted, the fact that the government is doing its best, but it doesn't trickle down to the other man the way it should be because people cannot do what they're supposed to. But first and foremost, I have to accept the fact that it was in the hands of God because there was something I observed last week: a bus that was carrying a full load of food items packed up. In the middle of the street, major intersection in Enugu State. I noticed it around uh, very late in the evening. Then the same morning, the next day, I came and I saw the same bus with the food items intact. That is strange. It cannot happen in any other state. It shows that Enugu people understand that people are suffering because they know that the person that his boss has packed up is also suffering the same fate with them. So nobody cut away anything, unlike in other states. Now, let us uh, try to bring it down to uh, the ordinary man's uh, world of consumption. Now, if we are looking at palliatives, the palliatives will go to the extent of ameliorating the sufferings of the people because there are direct and indirect effects of this uh, very uh, COVID-19. So before we know it, we will no longer be talking about effects, we will be talking about crisis. So if this situation progresses or snowballs from effect to crisis, then we have a serious problem in our hands. Because right now, people are law-abiding, nobody is doing anything that is uh, contrary to the law, 
But remember, when people are pushed, there's the gradation of hunger. If you are hungry, there's a level of uh, hunger you will be subjected to. You lose your sanity. So, and we do not want to go that far. We do not want to go that terrain. You see, I will uh, be of the view that this uh, lockdown should be relaxed to allow the ordinary man to find his own daily bread. So, the social distancing should be in place. Yes, that's I agree. Then, sanitizer at public places and uh, face masks. Yes, those are also okay. But the total lockdown is not what we want because the ordinary man will be affected unduly. And there's no way, because the government already has limited budget. Okay. So there's no way the government can provide for everybody. Right. This is the point. Let us hear from uh, uh, the Elbe State government uh, spokesperson. He mentioned uh, some of the economic effects of these uh, control measures, especially in small businesses. You know some people depend on their daily earnings to survive and fed for their families. Are there a kind of uh, plans by the state government to cushion the effects of the measures they are bringing on these small businesses, these small and medium, you know, businesses, in fact? Well, uh, thank you very much. I also appreciate the uh, great uh, respect to the professor because he's uh, been very honest with accepting that the enemy is in the hands of God. He's been very honest with accepting that the character of our people are distinct from the character of people you see everywhere. When you have good leadership, there's a tendency for the people to behave well. And uh, we sincerely appreciate that the fact that this good leadership is turning into good followership and good character. Now, as to the issues concerning uh, the pressure on the people, look, there is no government except a government that is practically insensitive, that does not understand that this period requires sacrifice. If you listen to His Excellency's address to the state when he put in these first measures, he first started by appreciating the fact that these measures we are going to put in place are going to put some pressure on the people. But that they are very necessary measures to protect the lives of the people because between life and safety of life and protection of life and the sacrifices we are making, if you put them on a balance, you obviously know which one to deal to. That's notwithstanding. The government is very sensitive. The government appreciates the fact that it is running on the mandate of 95.4% of registered voters that cast their vote to elect this government. So, without making noise, government has been doing quite a lot to see that this pain is gone. I'll give you an instance. It's not about noise making. First, before we decided on shutting down the borders and the markets, we didn't have a lockdown in Enugu. Enugu doesn't have a total lockdown. Before we decided on that measure, we understood the psychology of the Enugu city, vis-a-vis -vis the 17 local governments. Now, a good percentage of the economy of the state is run on the public service. So, before we shut down, before these measures came in on 31st, where short salaries were paid on 23rd. So, at least the public service was strengthened to move on. That is one. Two, as soon as we shut down, we discovered about the 30th of uh, March that the food items in the market has skyrocketed without making noise. We played the indices of supply and demand. We had to go back to the bank of our efforts because in the past five years we've been building agriculture. In the past five years we've been strengthening our local farmers. So using the forces of demand and supply, we released some of our products into the market without making noise. That's why you saw the launching of the coast tea rice. And immediately you saw rice that was selling for 23, 24,000. Now you can buy 16 to 18,000. Same happened with other food items. That was also a process of palliative to intervene at that stage. Now we are going further. As of yesterday, I can tell you that all medical workers in this state, in all the ministries they're working, had a 25% increase in their basic salary because of the dangers of what we are going through. This is part of the palliative measures. And we go on. Uh, and you can understand, I'm coming. You are going to ask me, what is happening to the ordinary poor man on the street? Especially the businesses, no, those coming. that closed their shops. I'm coming. How would they the recover from that this? Have been closed. Would there be any kind the of shops assistance? That have been closed were closed because it was the most necessary measure at that point in time to save the lives of the people. Okay. Now the state government is conscious of it. Despite the efforts of the federal government through the CBN to help small and medium scale industries, the state government is also coming. I give you an instance. What the state government has done 
we are going into a farming season. We have increased the capacity of our local farmers, particularly those farming rice. Because if you go around, all the farmers who have been training and financing for the past five years, we have become major off-takers and government is taking off the rice as soon as it drops. By that process, we are providing cash-based economy to them so that they can buy inputs and get, to get back into production. All right. We're not stopping at that. The governor is providing critical leadership. He is sitting down every hour reviewing the situation, taking advice of the multisectoral committee, from the State Economic Advisory Committee, from the security agencies, and of course from well many leaders in Enugu, and reviewing the processes. I can assure you, there is general hunger due to effects of COVID-19. But in Enugu, the effects will be less than what it is every other place because right. gradually we are coming with measures. And okay. as the days pass by, right, you will see new measures that will touch the lives of the ordinary man in the state. All right. There is uh, this other issue concerning how palliatives are being distributed. I would like uh, Professor Oyokure to tell us how these things can be well coordinated so that uh, people that are supposed to get them, that they, they reach to them. Yes, uh, talking about palliatives, uh, see, uh, permit me to say here, uh, like in other climes, it mustn't be the government that will provide palliatives. Of course. Personally, myself, I've provided palliatives. Mm. I produce a sanitizer I give to people. I give, I give a lot of people bags of rice. So these are the best I can do for my own personal uh, ability. Mm. Then government on its own can still do much better. Then I also invite uh, you know, private individuals who have the ability to support government in this area. Because obviously the government is overwhelmed. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Because nobody planned for this uh, COVID-19. Nobody knew. It just came out of the blues. Mm. As at uh, early this year, nobody knew that we would be in this very crisis. So I'm sure the different governments that are affected you know, badly by this are uh, already aware that they had a budget and they already having extra budgetary expenses. Mm. So it's quite uh, difficult. So uh, I believe that uh, the way the scenario the Honorable Commission has painted you know, gives us a, an indication that the government is planning to well in this direction to make sure that this palliative reach the people. So what I'm only saying is that as we are, you know, experiencing this difficulty in Enugu, I'm talking about Enugu now because I know other states are worse. You know, like you rightly mentioned, the, it's not, there's no total lockdown in Enugu. I pray there shouldn't be a total lockdown. All right. Because we should agree, and the governor, I, I believe, is watching, there shouldn't be a total lockdown because Enugu stays in the hands of God. So I believe that we have had only two cases so far, and I believe we will not have any other one, and we we'll continue to live in peace. All right, uh, the Honorable Commissioner, of course, the coronavirus pandemic is having a toll on the global economy. And uh, just uh, early this week, the price of uh, crude oil started uh, nose diving. Don't you think uh, this will affect not only Nigeria, but in which you know Nigeria depends a lot on uh, crude oil. And uh, like states, they always wait for allocation. How would any state prepare for such a worst scenario that will come after post COVID-19? Well, the, the truth is that, just like you said, first let me express the gratitude of the, the gratitude of the state to people like Prof, who in their own rights have made efforts to reach out to people that are poorer than them and people who need help and provided sanitizers. That shows patriotic citizenship. And the state will always be proud of people like this. The state is also very proud of people in both private business, corporate organizations that are also giving their own levels of support. That shows a state that is working together. Like His Excellency says, election ended when 95% of those votes were cast. This is period of governance where we want everybody together. Now, coming towards the economic effect. You see, the economic effect is strong, is serious, is hard. But there is something good about it. When I say good in quotes, it is global. Of course, it's global. So you are going to see stronger measures from the global community, IMF, World Bank, European Union. The stronger economies know that it is a must that there must be support for the weaker economies. Because the country, COVID-19 has taught the world that nobody is in isolation. As of today, America is suffering 50,000 plus deaths. Italy's story is such that uh, can only be recounted like uh, the story of the Israelites in Egypt. So is Spain. So is UK. So, for once, 
difficulty is going to teach us to share our common humanity to look at humanity as a common base and so i believe that if lives are saved if these necessary measures are respected once coronavirus is contained the world economy is only going to take some time but it's going to wake up again okay we pray that uh, the economy bounces back as soon as possible after coronavirus prof so many people are afraid that there will be food crisis hunger after coronavirus how do you think that states like Enugu State, he has mentioned a lot of things they are doing in the agricultural sector. What can we do to make sure that our people do not suffer hunger during this period? Yes, uh, actually, uh, with regard to that, I uh, was about saying that. Uh, right now, as we speak, there is a problem in the oil industry because uh, U.S. and Iran are already beginning this uh, war of wars in the Gulf, which is the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, we had the U.S. president has instructed that you shoot down any Iranian vessel that threatens the U.S. vessel. So that will have a trickle-down effect on our economy because remember we are running a petrol economy. Of course, we cannot uh, obviate the fact that uh, because we have a agrarian economy in any state, we do not depend on oil. That would be a total fallacy. So I believe that this oil money comes down to any state in one way or the other. So what any state has to do now, just like the Honorable Commission has uh, mentioned, is to empower the, the base. Those are the farming base who are able to bring food produce at the right time and at the right prices. So this will help to, you know, engineer the economy in the right direction. All right. Uh, just briefly, Honorable Commissioner, can you talk to the people of the states what they should do to protect themselves and protect others? Well, the and good and wonderful people of Enugu State, I bring you the love and respect of the state government, your government, the government you elected, the government you're proud of. The government is determined to ensure that COVID-19 is properly managed in Enugu, that our response is swift, is strong. That's why Enugu has three isolation centers, one in Osaka, one in Parkland, the other one at uh, the designated, uh, uh, what do you call it, the designated diagnostic center. That is why if you go to Kolari Hospital, you will see massive renovation work and fresh construction because we are preparing for the worst situation, even though we know we won't get there. So the people of Enugu, you can be sure that is why His Excellency the Governor has instituted a life group life assurance for all medical workers. That is why he has also approved weekly allowances for all the workers on the front line, medical workers, drivers, ambulances. Oh, what we beg you to do is to please ensure that you maintain physical distancing, you wash your hands regularly, and in case you have any suspected case or have any problem, please call our helpline. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for making it to Searchlight today. And uh, our viewers, I'm sure you know now that you have a role to play. Protect yourself and protect others while government plays its own role. We still expect to be with you the same time next week on Searchlight. Good night. Looking for the perfect getaway?